Hey, what's up everybody? We are back today doing another Gwent card quest. This one is for the quest called Velen Players. Now you're going to pick this quest up at the notice board in Crow's Perch, which is right here. So here is Crow's Perch. Zoom out, kind of give you some points of reference on the map here. Here's the inn at the crossroads. You're familiar with that. Crow's Perch, and here is the notice board. So make sure you... Uh, Check the notice board to pick this up, but once you do, you are going to get your first task, which is to come in and play the Baron. Now, if you got somewhere in your game where you can't play the Baron anymore, he won't talk to you or he's just gone, I won't go into details, you can come in here to his keep and search his room and find the special card that he has as a reward for you. Uh, you won't you won't complete the task for playing the Baron, but it will get you the card just in case you wound up missing it. Decided you were just going to play the Baron later, and then all of a sudden the fucking Baron's not there, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, what do I do? That's how you get your card from him. But if you decide to play him up front, that's what we're going to do today. My Gwent deck is pretty much a basic Gwent deck on the um, Northern Realm side. I've picked up all of the cards pretty much out here in Velen, bought them from the merchants. I really haven't played any random games. The only one card that I do have that you probably won't have in your deck at this point when you go to play him is Thaler. I ran out to Skellige, kind of cheated, and grabbed him early, which I know you're not supposed to do, but I did it anyways, just because I love to have extra spies in my deck. But otherwise, this is just uh, the pretty much the basic deck you'll have at this point anyways. Nothing too complicated about that. We're going to go up, chat him up, and get a game started in just a sec. All right, so we are now into our game with the Bloody Baron. And you have just been introduced to the card that you are going to win from him when you beat him. So we're going to get rocking on this right now. And we're going to drop our spy on the board. In this first round, I believe we are going to try to win a game against him. Actually, I think we're probably going to try to pass out this first round, depending on what he does. We'll see how what, how, how he rolls. So we're actually going to medic that spy out of our discard pile, because that was a really early Scorch, which was awesome to see, but uh, was strange. So we're going to medic him onto the board over there, draw two more cards, and then we're going to probably decoy her off and see what he does next round. Just to uh, test his metal, see how deep he wants to go into this round. Alright, so we're going to drop a 5 on the board and see what he does. Are we... Nah. Fuck it, we're going to pass. We're going to let him have this round. Pretty much, he's played a lot of cards, and we have a lot of cards in our hand, so we're hoping that we can just uh, beat him out of the next two rounds. And we're going to hope that he's not rocking another Scorch in there. Uh, hopefully he's got some Medic cards so we can see our Spies again, decoy them off, and get to use them twice. We've already seen that Rain card from him, so that was no big deal. You can see the typical play from the AI where they drop a relatively high point value card down and then pass, forcing you to hopefully play a card that you didn't want to. If we had like a one point value card, we would play that and put ourselves at a seven to win, but we don't. So we'll drop a five on the board. We really don't care about that card anyways. Um, we did draw another Blue Stripes Commando to give us our wonderful ability here with them, which is the Tight Bond ability. We love our Tight Bond. So it is our turn to go first. This is a must-win round for us, so we're going to drop our trebuchet on the board and see what's what. We've got one of those of our own, so we're really not too worried about that. We are worried about seeing another Scorch. And possibly him medicking out a Scorch, but at least we would see that happen. So that's good, since it is the top card on his deck. Alright, we're going to throw out our Blue Stripes Infantry. 
our Blue Stripes Commando guys. He's only got two cards left, so it doesn't look like any medics are coming. He may not be running the medic, or he just may not have got lucky enough to draw into it. We don't care about Biting Frost because we are running the commander that has the ability to clear all the weather effects from the board, so we don't give a shit about that. We're going to drop one more card down, see what he does. He passed. We win. We'll just go ahead and pass. We don't need to trounce him anymore. And then we'll get out of here and see what card we won from him, but I'm pretty sure it's Dijkstra. <sighs> There's a lot. All right. Our quest has been updated, and we did pick up Dijkstra. Dijkstra is a spy card in the Northern Realms deck. Go down here, check him out. Uh, Dijkstra, pretty awesome card to have. Uh, more spies is never a bad thing. So that is it for playing the Bloody Baron. We'll be back to uh, hit up the Soothsayer in just a moment. All right, we're back, and we're over with the Soothsayer, i.e., A.K.A. blah blah, the old sage. Uh, he is located all the way over here. Here's Down Warren. No, we didn't want to do that, now did we? So here's Down Warren. Um, here's Lindenvale. Mulberry, Hangman's Tree. Just to give you a couple points of reference, but he's all the way over here. Um, so, sorry, random thought. Does anyone else want to kick the shit out of the developers of the game because they only put one signpost in Crow's Perch and it's all the way at the bridge and not also in another one up in the keep so that every time you go up there you have to run all the back way through fucking town in order to get out and go anywhere? I, I don't know. That, it's been driving me crazy, so I figured I'd ask. Anyways, here's the old sage. Chat him up. Ask him for a game at Gwent. We'll be back with it in just a sec. All right, we are into our game with the old sage, the soothsayer, and he's rocking a monster deck. Best thing to do with a monster deck is, if you're playing Northern Realms, my opinion is drop some spies on the board in the first round, get some extra card draw, and hope that your spy addition to his side of the board forces him to pass at a relatively no low number. Now, it's probably he's going to get two musters out. If we play one more card on his side of the board, which we will do, he is likely to simply pass out of the round. And then we're going to need to come up with, uh, looks like, 14 points in order to beat him. My suggestion at this point in the game is to beat the monster deck on the first round where he's put out a few musters because the next round he's going to put out all the crazy musters that he has that are real high point values and you really don't want to have to be in a situation to deal with that um, so if you can beat him out of this round that is my suggestion we're gonna drop this guy down drop this guy down keep in mind that he, this uh, commander that he's running is a commander's horn ability on the close combat line so double the strength of all the close combat units so watch out for that, although he's not running Commander Sworn or Decoys, he is running a, uh, a commander that has monsters, uh, the Commander Sworn ability. Also, you notice I'm not running any Decoys like you've seen me run before. Uh, that was because I was hedging my bets on the fact that I really wouldn't care about decoying her off and playing her again, because he doesn't have the ability to play out of his deck with uh, medic cards or any uh, spy cards of his own. So we were kind of playing to his deck's strengths and weaknesses by not dropping that down there. We've got uh, 10 points to make up for, so we're going to drop our catapult down. We're going to drop this chick down. We're going to take the win and see how the next round goes. He's got three more musters he can play, I believe. The Arrakis, the Vampires, and the Crones. And we're going to see which of those come out this round. If we can force a couple of them out, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, just so that we could not deal with them next round. Because we want to let him win this round. Scorch? Really? Wow. Okay. That's fine. It's better to see the Scorch now than to see it later. We're going to drop him on the board. We don't want to have him wind up scorching off all of our uh, Blue Stripes Commandos or all of our Drag Reavers Dragon Hunters or anything like that. So we'll drop another one of these guys down, see what comes out of his deck, see if we can bait out another uh, 
He's going to Commander's Horn. That's fine. We really would hope for a another Scorch. Not another Scorch. Christ, why did I say that? We don't want another Scorch. We're hoping for another uh, uh, Muster card to come out. He's going to Torrential Rain. He's probably saving his Muster for the next round, um, which is an Arrakis Muster and a Crone's Muster. But he's not going to be able to put up with this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to play our Medic and pull out this card. We're not doing this to win the round. We know we've already lost the round. We don't care. What we are doing it for is to see what one more card play he'll throw on the board, and it's the Crones. That's awesome. So once again, this round is all about baiting cards out of his hand, yet keeping enough in your hand, you can solidly win the next round. Now, even if he is holding on to the Arrakis and does a muster, we will still win. So we're going to pass. He's already used his Commander's Horn ability from his leader card. He leaves one card on the board for the third round because that is the monster deck's ability. He's only rocking clear weather as his last card. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he's done. So the reason I wanted to hold on to these guys is because they were going to wind up yielding me my highest point value play. Uh, if I played that on the right line, it would have been uh, 90 points instead of 45. But it really doesn't matter. We win. Let's so back out of here and see what card we get from him. You've but what? All right, we picked up the Crone, the Weaveress. Uh, if you're starting to put together a monster deck, that is a nice one just for the fact that having all of the musters in your deck is very important. So there's the Crone Weaveress, and you can see the muster ability I was talking about. You're probably witnessing what it could do, but it says finds any cards with the same name in your deck and play them instantly. So playing the monster deck, it's actually one of those decks you wind up stacking more cards in than what you need just for the thought that you're going to be sucking so many cards out of your deck uh, than playing out of your hand. So this is the Arrakis muster that I was talking about as well. Same deal, but it's just another set of cards. So that's it for the Soothsayer. We're going to go play the Boat Builder out in Orenton, and we'll be back with that in just a sec. All right, so we're back. We're out in Orenton now. We're about to play the Boat Builder out here. Orenton is all the way down south here. It's almost directly south of the Crow's Perch landmark. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention about playing the old Soothsayer up here was that uh, when you go from down, if this is where you come from, if you come from down Warren and try to get up here, pay attention because there's a bandit camp right in the middle of your uh, path that you're going to be riding through. And if you don't feel like dealing with them or you're not capable of dealing with them at this time, um, you're going to need to ride around them or ride quickly through them. Just FYI, I didn't want it to bite you in the ass because I didn't mention it. But anyways, we're over here in Orenton now. We're going to go chat up the boat right and uh, be into a game with him in just a minute. All right, so we're into our round with the boat builder. Doing some card draw here. We got shitty card draw, but we did get our three spies, so... We're going to hope that in the application of spies, we wind up getting some better cards that we can play. Keep in mind, if you haven't dealt with the Nilfgaardian Empire deck before, their special ability, you know how if you're playing Northern Realms, you get that card draw on your second or third round, depending on what your luck is. Um, the Nilfgaardian Empire's deck ability is that if you go to a draw, they automatically win. So don't draw with these guys. It's not just this guy. It's that deck. So if you see somebody playing that deck, keep that in mind. Uh, he's got. He definitely has some spies in his deck. We put our decoys back in, but we only drew one out of the gate. We're going to play the spy game with him early on. The Nilf Guardian Empire deck definitely has the ability to medic out spies. So be aware. Got some Blue Stripes Commandos. That's good card draw. We're really hoping for another decoy. But if we have to, we will do with what we have now. We did not get our Medic either. Shit. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, let's go ahead and decoy his Spy off and play it back on him. We 
we would have we might have left that if we had our medic, but we don't, so he waits the commander's horn, that's no big deal. Play our spy back over there. We did get our medic, that's good. Alright, so he's played a lot of cards out of his deck now. We're totally not wasting cards to win this round, especially because most of the, some of the points he has really came out of our deck. So we're going to go ahead and pass. Let him have the round. No big deal. We're going to hope for him not being able to medic out a ton of spies and increase his card draw, although it's possible he will. But we so far have uh, a significant advantage of him, on him when it comes to card draw. He's probably going to play that card, and when we play one, his next opportunity will probably be to pass, or his next choice will probably be to pass. There we go. So he's going to pass now. If I was playing anyone else in a situation like this, I would still have to win. However, if you were in a situation where you had two uh, gems of health, they had two gems of health, you may decide just to take it to a final sudden death round and play um, like a 5 to equal their 10. But once again, with the Nilf Guardian deck, you can't do that because any type of draw goes in their favor. So we have to win anyways because we only have one life gem left, but I wanted to point that out. All right, so sudden victory round. We got our card draw out of that, and now we're going to see where the rubber hits the road. He got he has five cards left, but he, as I said, he, he is playing a Nilf Guardian Empire deck, which means they can medic out. They can medic out some of these spies out of their deck, so we're going to see what kind of deck he really has. I do not remember whether he's got medics or not. Don't be scared or don't be surprised if you see that he's rocking a scorch uh, as well. Always keep in mind that scorch is available at all times. So he just sucked a card. Did he suck a card out of our discard pile? Draw a card from your opponent's discard pile. Oh, well, we don't really have anything in our discard pile that we care about, so he can suck as many cards out of our discard pile as he wants. It's not going to change the fact that he's going to lose. Oh, no, not Death Mold. No. God, for whatever shall we do? All right. We're going to uh, drop a Commander's Horn down here on this line. Engineer. He doesn't look like he has any medics. He may have medics in his deck, but he doesn't look to see it doesn't seem to, that he has them in his hand. We're gonna drop another commander's horn down, really trying to move the game along, not really caring what we play at this point. We just wanted to see what that last card was. And it's nothing that can beat us, so we are gonna go ahead and pass, take the round, and check out our reward. Rules say the point. We picked up Letho of Gullet, which is a hero card from the Nilfgaardian Empire deck. So we're going to go over to the Nilfgaardian Empire and check out Letho. He is a close combat card. He's a hero card, which is nice. So always nice to build up your Nilfgaardian Empire deck if that's the direction you're going. Uh, definitely is a unique and powerful deck. It's a bitch to play against sometimes, I think. If you haven't experienced that yet, you will soon. So our next stop is going to be out in Midcops to play the little boy named Hattie. All right, now we're out in Midcops about to play the 10-year-old version of Dustin Hoffman, Rain Man. And when it comes to Gwent cards, or so he thinks. So Midcops is right down here. Here's Crow's Perch. You're familiar with that, so you should know how to get down here from there. We'll head inside, we will chat up Hattie, and we'll be back with a game with him in just a moment. Alright, so we're now into our game with Hattie. He is running a Northern Realms deck, and he is rocking this commander here. Pick an impenetrable fog card from your deck and play it instantly, so be aware that that could come at any time. I'm going to stack this up, see how this goes. Really would have liked to get... On our Dijkstra Spy, or at least another decoy for this. The fact that we don't have a decoy, we don't have our medic. Shit. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see how how he wants to play this round out. We could give it to him because we've already put six points on his board. Uh, you know what? I think that's what we're going to do. He hasn't really played anything of consequence. He's played two poor fucking infantrymen and whatever the hell this is. Whatever that other card is over there. Um, it's a one-point card. Who cares, right? Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and pass this out. Move on to our next round. Let him have it, and then we'll take the next two. Provided he doesn't have... Provided he doesn't medic something out. If he does, it's no big deal. We've got our decoy hanging around just for that purpose. He's going to draw an extra card, which blows, but we'll get one the next round as well. A little Vernon Roach action. So, if we play low here, we'll hope he's like the typical AI that will pass against a low play. Yes, okay, so he's going to pass. We are going to... We probably should have played a 5 on the board, to be honest. That was a mistake. So that we could have played a 6 and only wasted 2 cards, but whatever. We've got our 3... Blue Stripes Commandos, so and we have Commander's Horn, so we're not really worried about the next round too much. Nah, we're good. So we'll just Commander's Horn this line and this line and call it a win. Always keeping an eye out for Scorch. Seeing how that goes. We're going to play a 6 point value as well. He's going to Commander's Horn, his Siege Line, that's fine, that's what we're going to do too. He's got a Dragon's Reaver. I think we are going to drop our Commander's Horn now and see what other cards come out of his hand. got a blue stripes commando so far he's got three more cards he can play it doesn't look like he's rocking a medic so yeah whatever we still don't care about that uh, we are going to we're still gonna hold on to our decoy maybe he's being sneaky and he's gonna throw out a medic at the end but that doesn't even look like that's gonna happen Alright, we are going to drop our Commander's Horn here and force him to play his last card and see what it is. Pfft, clear weather. Whatever. That's nothing. So, Hattie the Card Shark. It's more like Hattie the Flop. Nothing we can't handle. We pass, we win. Game over. And we'll pop out of here. And check out our prize. I'm sure it's Vernon Roach. Yes, it is. So, Vernon is a hero card for your... Oh, wait, did we get two cards? Oh, and we picked up a leader card for the monster deck. Actually, it says common item. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a leader card. Anyways, let's go to our deck. Check that out as I ramble. Sorry. So, Northern Realms deck, Vernon Roach is your hero card. And then I believe we picked up our second monster leader card. Even though it said it was a common card, I think it is... I think that's the card we picked up. But let's go down into our deck and just make sure. Yeah, we don't have any other monster cards. So, yeah, that's the uh, leader card we picked up. So... Uh, we got a monster leader card for completing the quest, and we got Vernon Roach for beating him. So that is it for the Gwent Velen Players quest, and as always, thanks for watching. Take care.